Well, are you trapped in the what if merry-go-round? The ladies and I talk about how to break the cycle and get off this up and down roller coaster. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, do you sometimes feel trapped or confused or scared when it comes to uncertainty about the future? Oftentimes we can get stuck in the brutal cycle of asking what if, and it can leave you stagnant and steal years off of your life. So today we're looking at how to overcome the what ifs of life to find peace and freedom. And of course, we're gonna probably pull a little bit from the Word of God because that's really where all the answers are. But so many of the ladies at the table have really incredible life experiences that I know they're gonna share with you today in hopes of helping you, and that's what we wanna do. But before we get to that, joining me around the table is April Simons, how are you? I am good, and I love this kind of talk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fun. This is real table talk. It's real talk. You know, and have you found, April, that with every year, the Lord teaches us more? You look back yeah. and you're like, wow, there's still so much more to learn yeah. and grow. and. You know, every year I discover how faithful God is. And I know that sounds so spiritual, but it's true because I look at things years ago that I was fearful of, but because I went through the fear and got to the other side, I realized, you know what? God is on the other side of everything that we might be apprehensive yeah. about. It's yeah. like you get another notch in the belt. We do, it's good. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting a lot of notches. I'm, I'm telling you, I have a ton of notches. <laughs> Rachel Lamb Brown, are you getting notches? I got a lot of I got a lot of room left, so I got to I'm learning as yeah. I go and yeah. every year just like learn and grow so much, but yeah. I totally agree with what April says we live life looking forward, but we understand it looking backwards. And so many times we don't understand in the moment why things yeah. are the way they are. But when we look back, we can realize, wow, God was really with me every step of the way. Yeah, good. I love that. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm good. We have a Thank few notches you. in our belt. <laughs> oh my goodness. We've traveled a few and just roads when together. I think we have. Just think when we've achieved just when you the think last you don't notch. need another notch, yeah. you get a notch. Yeah, and that is called life. It is, yeah. it is. It is called life, but every notch helps us to understand, just like April said, how faithful God oh is. Oh my goodness, and you do. And so you the next thing that comes along, you remember. Mm -hmm. That's what the children of Israel, they would remember what God had done, yes. brought them through, and I think that helps us so much. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Kendra Kelly Dean. Hey, and isn't it nice though, <laughs> to know <laughs> that we all get to go through these experiences, yeah. Yeah. right? That it's yes. not just one person having to figure this out, but we all get to do that. We can all lean on each other, and that's how we grow in our maturity and our relationship yeah. with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So good, so good. Well, when it comes to navigating life, it can be easy to get in the habit of asking, well, what if questions, like yeah. what if, they don't like me. What if I lose my job? What Ooh. if they leave me? The reality is that this type of questioning can be a trap that can rob you of your joy, your hope, your love, and even faith. So how do we break free from its grip? Let's look at some of the most common issues that make us ask what if. I'm gonna start with you, Kendra, because uh, we just said overcoming <laughs> yeah. the fear of failure. What if I yeah. don't succeed? And that's a big one. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of women really struggle with this because you feel like you have to balance everything, career, family, your husband, your church life, your children. And you, that can be very overwhelming if you're sitting here going, but I don't wanna drop anything, mm -hmm. right? And so I actually struggled with this. I am the only daughter, only granddaughter. And so I grew up with a bunch of boys mm -hmm. and whatever they could do, I could do it just as good or better, right? That's right, girl. And that's yeah. right. And so this sense of And you would sing that song, anything you can do, I, I can, can do better. better. Yeah. You know? But um, I grew up in a very competitive family yeah. that way. And so I always wanted to be the best. I always wanted to be on top. I always wanted to be the leader, right, in everything. And as you grow up and you mature and life changes in your different seasons, Sometimes that can get intimidating. Mm -hmm. And you feel like if I fail, mm -hmm. if I mess up, not only am I going to ruin this for me, but I could have this ripple effect on everybody around me and they're watching me. Mm -hmm. And I remember there were situations where I would mess up and I wouldn't get it right and I would be crippled in bed 
under my covers. I didn't want to come out. I was humiliated. I was mortified. And then we create this dialogue mm -hmm. that never really happened, exactly. but yeah. we create it, making it so much bigger than what it is. And so I think one of the biggest moments of fear of failure that I had was whenever Dusty and I knew the transition is happening, we're about to lead, be lead pastors at Heartland. And I remember laying on the carpet, praying to God, just saying, God, what if I mess up? You're putting me, you're giving me all this responsibility over all these people. And what if I let them down? What if I let my children down? What if I can't balance this? And I just remember being so overwhelmed. And he, in that moment, gave me this sweet, peaceful presence. And he spoke to me and he said, no one's gonna do it like you do. Mm -hmm. Do not compare yourself to others. I've created you this way for a reason. I'm goofy. Mm -hmm. I like details. I like being hands-on, you know? I, I You're like people. You're the best people. party planner. Would you agree with that? <laughs> yes. Rachel, yes. the best party planner ever. This girl is a shaper extraordinaire. 99.9%. I like getting <laughs> dirty, like getting your hands in it and stuff. Yeah. But Dusty and I, we made an agreement that as we're leading people, we're going to be as genuine and as authentic as we can. And that even meant admitting that we've made mistakes. Yeah. Because we don't want to put on this fake facade for everyone saying, oh, no, we're absolutely perfect. Yeah. We're not. Right. Yeah. God is with us, and He gives us the strength and the encouragement. And so one of the scriptures that I lean on is in James, where it just says, hey, consider it pure joy. Mm -hmm. Pure joy when you, these yeah. trials and these moments happen because I am stretching you. I'm teaching you how to persevere, and I'm growing your maturity in me. And so I would say if you're facing that fear of failure, you need to surround yourself with people who are going to be your cheerleaders, yes. who are going to encourage yeah. you, speak life into you. So surround yourself with people. And remember that God is, is for you. And somebody who knows the Word of God. Yes. Like somebody, yes. that's really important. Like-minded believers. Like-minded. Yes. So it's important. It's important who you surround yourself with and who you trust and they know they're going to, yeah. you know, they're going to keep your confidence. Yeah. Like I know when I talk to Cindy mm -hmm. about something confidential, that she's going to keep it, and she knows mm -hmm. that for me as well. Yeah. And uh, but to have, but she loves God, and she's going to she's going to tell me the truth, even and if people that aren't afraid to be honest with yeah, you exactly. and challenge right. you and stretch you to be totally. everything yeah. God's so called important. you to be. That's, and also not really to be good. so hard on yourself because we're not always going to get it right, and we yeah. aren't perfect. Yeah, and, and you know what? We're, it's, we're a lot sometimes. more believable if we let people know yeah. we've got a few yeah. warts and you know <laughs> out there as exactly. well, which we do. And we're walking through life just like you, mm -hmm. and and there is there's no perfect person except Jesus. He's mm -hmm. the only yes. one that was yeah. able to achieve that on this earth. In the meantime, we trust totally in Him to help us. Cindy, what are you going to talk about? Oh wow, fear <laughs> of rejection. Ooh, mm. and how how to handle that? So many people deal with rejection. Oh my goodness, and and you know the thing I think I've realized in life as I look back that a lot of things I didn't move forward in. I didn't do maybe what could have been a great experience in my life because of the fear of being rejected, fear of not being good enough, yeah. so therefore rejected by people. And, um, and I think a lot of times the dialogue of what we hear other people rejecting other people, yeah. then we feel like, well, if people are rejecting other people, they'll reject me too. Yeah. I had experiences in life. I had experiences where prominent people in our ministry that had positions, when I would try to uh, communicate with them because I knew there was an issue, um, I, I think that was one of the hardest things I went through when actually somebody to my face that I have to work with every day said, I don't like you. I don't think you're a good wife to your husband. Oh, they and, did not. Yes, yes ma'am. And I don't want you or need you as my friend. Oh. And the Lord really helped me because it devastated me because I knew they loved my ex-husband. They were, they really wanted to be a part of his life. And in it, I thought, Lord, help me. How am I going to do this? Like, how am I going to go every day and yeah. work with these people? And it was like the Lord spoke to me, such a crazy little vision, but it was like, if you're standing for me and you're standing for truth and people are throwing tomatoes at you, mm. Will you still stand for truth? And, or will you let it just set you back? And so in that, I began to find things in the scripture, like when David was saying, um, God, let me be the apple of your eye. Mm. He would just cry out to, to the Lord to be your, his strength and his strong tower. 
And those were things I think I found myself bearing in the Word of God yeah. to help me. Because even at my age now, there are times when things are said, actions are done, mm -hmm. and I feel really rejected mm -hmm. at the moment. And it's like, okay, Cindy, you are not going to let yeah. this take you out. Yeah. People sometimes don't realize they're rejecting you or you're taking yeah. it that way. And so I think it's just been a, a journey through life. I think probably everybody sometime or another has that fear yeah. of being rejected. But he doesn't reject us. He no. does not. He oh, ever. And, he and doesn't that, ever. And you're, no. you're a daughter of the Most High. Absolutely. Right. And I think the song that came out years ago really ministered to my soul when it was the song, if you remember, by Hillsong, Jesus, Lover of My Soul. Yeah, mm -hmm. great song. Jesus, lover of my soul. And it was like the Lord was saying, Cindy, I love you. I've created you uniquely. I love you, your mind, your will, and emotions. Yeah. And I will not forsake you, which yeah. the verse in I'll Hebrews. never leave you. I'll never forsake mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. But people will. People, yes. I'm just going to tell mine real quick, and I'm going to go to Rachel. We're just going to go straight down the table. But you're asking what, what as I'm sitting here, I thought <laughs> of mine, um, what I would talk about is just the fear of man. Yeah, um, that was that was probably a big thing for me when we started in Christian television back in 1985. You just think everybody's going to love you, and I was just you know, <laughs> 20 something year old girl who loved God, and um, you know we would do a program. It was just in a small television market that we were in, and people would, um, you know. They'd have their thoughts about what we did or didn't do, what we did right or what we did wrong. And I would get caught up in um, really being hurt by what some of these people would say. Yeah. And it was really the fear of man. And one day the Lord spoke to me and he said, are you going to be worried about what they think about you or more concerned about what I think of you? Right. That's good. And so I just totally shifted. Yeah. And um, listen, if you're, if you're living a life and trying to please God, mm -hmm. you're not going to be perfect first off. But let's just say your heart is toward the things of God and you're trying to do what's right in the sight of the Lord. He's got you. Yes. He will be your yes. defender. Yes. That's right. And you don't have to worry about what people say about you. I'm, yeah. I am, I tell you what, I will finish this race. Yes. And at the end of it, I know I'm going to hear well done, good and faithful good. servant because yeah. I am, to the best of my ability, going to try to do what He is leading me to do on this earth yeah. or whatever He created me for. I'm going to try to finish that race the best I can and please Him. Yes. Now, in the process, there are a lot of people that are going to love us. You know, a lot of people are going to say, great job, and that helped me, and you ministered to me. And then, But then there are the <laughs> there others. Are those. Yeah. And the bigger your platform is, yes. the more of those people yeah. that come out of the woodwork. <laughs> they feel the need. And they feel like they yeah. know you, they can judge you. And really, those people don't bother me at all anymore. Yes. I just say, God, love them, Lord. Yeah. Bless them, help them, yeah. speak to them. And Father, you, you, you take them on yes. and right. teach them whatever you need to teach them. I, I'm not going to have bad feelings, unforgiveness, but I am just going to focus again on you. And if I okay. miss it, you show me, you, you surround me with people that I yeah. trust and love mm -hmm. that will, will speak the truth to me. But I can't worry about having the fear of man like yeah. King Saul did. Yes. That's mm -hmm. so and that's what happened to King Saul. Compromise. Yeah. If you and did. King Saul worried more about what the people thought mm -hmm. about him than he did what right. God, and it so messed true. him up at the end it of his did. life. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to mess up at the end mm -hmm. of my life. I want to finish strong. So yes. don't let people just keep you so constrained and just tortured mentally. So good. Don't let them do it. Just love them, yes. forgive them, give them to God, mm -hmm. and then say, Lord, now you show me what to do. Help me know what to do in this situation and move forward. You're going to be so much happier. Yes. Really, really are. So Rachel. Good. Okay, well, today I'm going to be talking about overcoming stress, which I know is something we <laughs> all can relate to because it's something we have all dealt with at some point in time. And by the way, this morning she had <laughs> incredible stress and she's like, why do I have to talk about stress yeah. when this is such this a stress. This is not morning. the day for the stress show, mother. <laughs> Here's the thing. I remember there is this, this season in my life where I felt constantly exhausted and stressed out. And part of that is because of the nature of my personality. Hello. And Hello. I, li <laughs> I like to say and joke around, I am a recovering perfectionist, a big emphasis on recovering because I'm not sure I will ever completely overcome that. But 
It's just in me, you guys. I don't know why everything that I do, I want to achieve and I want to do it to the best of my right. ability yeah. and with yeah. excellence. excellence. It doesn't matter, like the smallest little thing to the biggest project. And, and all that is great. Let me yeah. just say, all yeah, right. of that is <laughs> right. great. But the word, keyword here is balance. <laughs> balance. balance. This, is where we're, this is where we're going with this <laughs> okay. story. So okay. after me and Josh got married, I'm, I'm so grateful for a husband who is so supportive and encouraging. Just him knowing my heart um, to want to just do everything with excellence and having so many exciting projects that we're working on and just really being passionate about the things that we're doing here and with my job. And so um, it wouldn't be uncommon during this time period for me to be at work till 10, 11. This is true. Midnight. And like, I remember like the, the, the first <laughs> shift we leave and then like the cleaning crew would, would come in. I like know all the cleaning crew. And then like a few hours later, like I would get a knock on the door and security would be like, are you still here? I was just checking. I saw a light. <laughs> And um, it kind of got to a point where it probably wasn't um, the best work-life balance. And, and it probably wasn't, not. It wasn't healthy. Probably not for the marriage. marriage. <laughs> or yeah. for the marriage. Yeah. But here's the thing. This is not something that was expected of me or required of me. This is just yeah. out of my own nature of wanting to, like, get all this stuff done. And, you know, I'm a big idea person. I'm a big dreamer like that. And I'm yeah. like, let's but do this. But you're also and a finisher, too. Yes. You will always finish the things that you start. Yes. You know? And so... Um, I remember like me and Josh and we would sit down and we would start talking about wanting to start a family. It was always a frustrating conversation because we're just like, oh, there's never a good time for this. There's always <laughs> another project or, um, you know, a big event or a trip. And so I, I remember one day like going to the Lord with all of this and just being like, how does, how is this going to work and all fit in? I'll never forget what he said to me. He said, Rachel, I've come to give you life in mm -hmm. life more abundantly. Oh, and nowhere good. in that does it say anything about being stressed yeah. out, tired, it's exhausted, true. and overworked. And I'm like, so good. you know what? You're right. And I'll never forget what he said to me next. He said, if you'll do less, I can do more in your Ooh. life. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> that's good. And oh, that God. doesn't make good. sense in the natural. And I've often find, found that like Jesus's ways don't really ever make sense to our earthly minds. Right. But it, and I wish I could say it was like a a really quick process. It wasn't. It was a long journey of unlearning some bad habits and recalibrating. But with the Lord and with my husband, I was able to get to a really, really a good. good, healthy place. Uh, before we got pregnant with Judah, I'm so grateful because those moments as a mom, you only get once. And so I was really able to right. just enjoy and soak in, especially when he was super, super little. And I think a lot of times for moms, we're told it's either or. Like yeah. either you're a you're mom right. or mm -hmm. you can have a job. Yep. But I really, I think with the Lord, it's both and you can be an amazing yeah. mom right. and you can have an amazing career and have purpose in the things that the Lord has called you to do. And so one of the verses that I go to yeah, a lot. And, and if a mom watching right now, you're just thinking, well, you're just not giving enough. That It's just the same rule applies. Mm -hmm. If God has put something gifting in you yep. and calling yes. and you're fulfilling that purpose, then you may think you're not enough, but God will fill in yeah. the gaps right. and your kids will actually get more yeah. than if yeah. you were there all the time because you are fulfilling the will of God. And, and there, the word is balance. Yeah. Yes, we're all about family around here, but you've got to have that balance. That doesn't mean that you just cut out that gift that God's given you that's Absolutely. so important to the kingdom of God. Yeah, Yeah, and it's so true. And I always say, I am such a better mom because I work. Like it's it's just, it's so much better for, for our family. But one of the verses that I love and that I go to is Proverbs 20, 24. And it says, the Lord directs our steps. So why try to understand mm. everything along the way? So I feel <laughs> like stress <laughs> comes when we try to control every oh, outcome, right. try to understand every we outcome. Do. And Kendra, she's That's like true. nodding over there. Because we are shapers. 100%. A lot of times I think my plan is the best. I'm like, Lord, this is such a great plan. Why are we not following this? Yep. And what I've learned through life. I mean, you're life, only God. Like, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> what I've learned through life is God's plans and his ways are always better and they're always higher. So if stress is something that you're struggling with, I would encourage you with the same thing the Lord told me. If you will do less, Yes. He can do more in your life. Exactly. That means trusting Him, yes. uh, believing in Him, surrendering to Him, all the things, all the plans, letting go of control. And when you do, yeah. you know that you're more than a conqueror. You know that yeah. He's already won the victory for you in your life. And so when I started doing that, it's amazing because the less I did, I actually ended up producing more. Right. So and, good. you know, stress 
a lot of those things you're concerned about that you're stressed out about don't even ever yeah. happen. That's so yes. true. Yes. There's so many so of them true. that don't even come to pass. Yeah, and, 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 or that it doesn't like, even matter. It was right. so little yeah. in the grand scheme of everything. It didn't even yeah, matter exactly. to begin with. Right. This is really an important key. It's so simple. It's so profound. Is that in the middle of your most stressful moment of everything falling apart is the perfect time to begin worshiping. Right. That's true. Yes. And I always say to people, they'll say, well, this has happened, that has happened, I don't even know what to do. I'll be like, well, on the other side of that, mm -hmm. yeah. God is about to do something really great, trying to get you distracted. Mm -hmm. So you just begin to worship Him and give it to Him. Say, God, this is bigger than me. I cannot, I need you to take it. And don't take it back, by the way, when you give it to Him. Sometimes we give it, <laughs> then we take it back. So yeah. give it to Him and just begin to worship Him. You know, there's, it's so powerful to worship God in yes. the middle Yes. of conflict. And and I mean, I, some of the most horrible moments in my life when I didn't know what to do, that's what I did. Yeah. I just yes. I just stopped and yeah. said, God, I don't know what to do and just mm -hmm. begin to worship him and say, I need direction. And, and he would speak so clearly to me. So he can do that it's for so you too. It's so true. Whenever you shift your focus from the yes. problem yeah. to the problem solver, yep. yes. everything changes. You, yep. you can't even be stressed anymore because it's just like, you know, the Lord's got it. It's so good. Now you cap us off, April. I cap us off. I'm going to talk about overcoming depression, <laughs> as I say it with a smile. And, uh, you know, I, and I like to say it like this, overcoming dark places in yeah, life. And, yeah. You know, I, I don't know if I've ever been depressed, but I've definitely been in dark places. Mm -hmm. And I can think of a big instance for us in 1999. We left everything in Houston, came here to start a church, had a great church for 14 years. And 2014, our church was taken from us by the bank. And, you know, it was... Oof. Wasn't supposed to happen that way, y'all. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. it just yeah. everything in a in a blink of an eye changed. And you know, I had this thought, God, what, why is this happening? You know, yeah. you know, what if? And of course, know, you're yeah. per, you personally affected as well. Yeah. Oh my word, yeah, man, all my little kids, everybody, in my family. It, it's just, it's bad things happen to good people. So it puts you in this place that I was in a dark place, mm -hmm. and you know, what if what if we don't have anything else after this? The yeah, future. the unknown, yeah. the fear of the unknown, and. Thank God God's in the middle of it all. Yeah. Don't understand it. I still to this day don't understand it. And that's one thing to overcome depression and dark places. You've got to let go of God, you know, the unanswered questions. Because yeah. some things we're just not going to be able to figure yeah. out. Mm, right. We'll maybe know it in heaven. We probably won't care about it when we get to heaven. But you got to let go of unanswered questions. Yeah. And then I, there's a scripture in Genesis. And God told Abram, he said, Abram, Look up from the place where you're standing. And I love this. It gives me chilly voice. <laughs> Look up from the place you're standing. Look to the north, south, east, and west. In other words, I just put myself in there. April, look up from the devastation that you're at right now. It's good. Don't look at what you're facing. Don't look at your current circumstances. It doesn't seem, it seems bad. You can't understand it. But look around. Yes. God has so much more in store. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't focus on the unknown. You can't focus on what's going on. Like you said, the problem you got to focus on the promise. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I just found that these are some things that I did. You, one thing I did is I got out of bed every morning. Some yeah. people who are depressed, That's they can't true. get out of wow. bed. That is true. I just encourage you, maybe you're in that dark place right now, and just open up the windows, open up the curtains. Yeah. That's a big place. Take one step. How do you get through depression and dark places? One step at a time. Mm -hmm. One step at a time. You know, uh, change what you're saying, and you'll change what you're seeing. So Instead true. of saying, I, I don't think I'll ever, what if I never get out of this? What if the light never comes? God, I thank you that you're the light of the world. I yes. thank you that you have a good plan for my life. I thank you, Lord God, that you're with me, you're in me, you're around me, your spirit is on me. And then there's a scripture in Deuteronomy. I love it, and I'm gonna take it out of context, but it says this, you've circled this mountain long enough, now turn north. Ooh. So sometimes we keep going around the same mountain same over and over, mountain. And over again. until we learn. Yeah. Until we learn, and sometimes we can get stuck in the dark place. That, like yeah. I said, the mm -hmm. questions: God, what's next? What if there is no next for me? Right. What if there's not yeah. something as good as before? And I just had to decide to get off of that mountain, circle yeah. the mountain, yeah. and just take that step of faith, put feet to our faith, and, and you're say, such God, a I gift trust of hope you. right now mm -hmm. in your life. Yeah, I try. It's not permanent. Where we are when we're in those dark moments, mm -hmm. it's yeah. not permanent. And if we can God. tell ourselves, yeah. God, I yes. thank you that I'm coming through. Yeah. It's not permanent. Yeah. I thank you that you are on the other side of this dark place, and I will come through it. The sun will shine. So in. good. Yeah. You know, I was just as you were talking about that, I was thinking about when when Marcus went to be with the Lord. Like those first first months were so difficult, and like mm -hmm. you said, it was a very dark place. Not because 
I didn't love God or I didn't feel his yeah. presence or it's just like the the unknowing of yeah. like life will never be the same for me yeah. again and how in the world Jesus are we going to do this right. but you know I didn't have all the answers to those questions early on but what I did was what you did mm -hmm. is I got out of bed. Mm -hmm. A lot of people said, oh, you should go take a sabbatical for six months. I surely would have gone into depression yeah, right. if right. I hadn't have done yeah. that. Right. If I would have done that. I mean, so people are like, I can't believe you showed up. I mean, I, showing up yes. and giving and out actually really was forward. part of the healing process for me yeah. personally. I did have an unshakable trust in God because of his faithfulness yeah. of almost 40 years of ministry yeah. that I had seen him do so many miraculous things that I knew that I could trust him. Yeah. Yes. But I mean, it was difficult mm -hmm. to get up. Yeah. And I mean, in the morning, sometimes I'd hear the Lord say, okay, you got to get up, yeah. get ready. And I'd be there alone in that house, just be me and Lola, the cat, you know. <laughs> and, um, but I would get up, I'd spend my time with the Lord. I'd say, you know, I need your joy this morning. I need you to give it to me. By the time I got home, it was run out again. I have to fill up yeah. again the next morning. That's good. But the, the people say, well, how did you do it? I mean, it was just taking one step at a time. It was just putting one foot in front of the other and saying, okay, God, what are we doing today? Yes. And not yes. knowing, you know, what, what tomorrow would hold, but knowing in whom I have believed. Yes. And so I hope that you've been encouraged by what we've shared today. You, you ladies, that was really great. I appreciate your vulnerability in sharing. I hope it has meant a lot to you today. There's some of you, some of each story uh, maybe touched you. Maybe there was someone that you really related to. I hope that that comes out of the conversation today at the table because we are out of time. <laughs> but you know what? I know that life can throw things your way that make it super tempting to fall into the what if trap. But the book of Jeremiah tells us that God has good plans for our lives. My favorite scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11. So don't let fear rob you of the certainty of God's goodness because he does work all things for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. Another one of my favorite scriptures in Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all yes. your heart. Mm -hmm. Lean not into your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him as being Lord of your life and he will direct your path. Yeah. Not that he might, yeah. maybe. Right. He will direct yeah. your path. And like April said, you some of you have had doors that have shut and God's like, okay, just trust me. It's dark right now. Trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. And then boom, another door's gonna open. And um, eternity is a long, 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 long time. This is just a whisper, really, this life. Yeah, and so, so um, that's really the most important thing that we can share with you right now is that trust God. If you don't know him, call out on his name. Just say, Jesus, I need you. Yes. Come into my heart today. Forgive me. Be Lord of my life. I want to do what they're doing at the table. I, I, I want to do that. I'm ready to do that. And I want to tell you everything can change for sure. Well, if you have a need today, there's a number on the screen. We'd love for you to call. And uh, if you need someone to pray with you, if you prayed that prayer, I, I would be glad to send you a free book entitled, Now What? Those of you that don't know the Lord, and maybe you say, well, I'm not quite ready. Well, guess what? The Lord's going to be working on you. You're going to be thinking about some of these conversations. You say, you know what? I'd rather do it with God mm -hmm. than without God. Believe me, this life is a whole lot easier with him walking beside you. And he wants that. He yes. wants to have a personal relationship with you. Well, I do want to thank the ladies for joining me at the table. If you've enjoyed our talk today and it's impacted your life, let us know. Leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. We love you. I'm so excited about uh, you getting through some of these tough times. God's going to be faithful. Get you a Bible. Get a Bible you can understand and just start reading the book of John and the book of Psalms. And uh, you're going to find some of these promises we're talking about. And you're going to be so encouraged. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.